Hello, research design and analysis students. Today we're going to be looking at how to do descriptive statistics and graphing in SPSS for those descriptive statistics. So this will include three measures of central tendency, including mean, median, and mode, and a number of measures of variability, also called dispersion. This will include range, minimum and maximum scores, variance, standard deviation, and interquartile range. The goal of measures of central tendency is to tell you what's the most typical person look like in the data set, and the measures of variability show you the spread or distribution of those scores. In other words, how spread out is the sample of data that you have. You actually can do descriptive statistics from a number of locations in SPSS. I'm going to start with the most basic and then work up to ones that give you more information. So if you are looking at SPSS, one way to do descriptive statistics is to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Descriptives. In this fashion, you would be able to take a variable, let's say we wanted to look at age out of our class data set, and figure out what's the typical age for students in Psych um, 2231, Research Design and Analysis 1. If you select that variable, you can either double click it and it will put it in the box, or you can select it and use the arrow to put it in the box. You can actually do several variables at once. So if you wanted to do both age and height, you could put those two variables or 30 variables into your analysis. The next option you want to do is up here in the right where it says options, and it will automatically assume you want the mean standard deviation and the minimum and maximum scores. You can also ask it to do other measures of dispersion or variability, like variance and range. If you really knew your stuff and you wanted to look at kurtosis and skewness, or how tall or how slanted a distribution is, you could select those as well. For purposes of this training, we're going to stick with mean and these measures of dispersion or variability. Click Continue, and then OK and it will show you the descriptive statistics that you selected. Not a bad start. But hey, you might say, I also need to look at the median and the mean, or I want to see a graph of the data as well as know what the numerical values are. In that case, your better bet might be analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. If you select frequencies, you could pick your same variables, let's say age and height, and it will automatically give you a frequency table, which is not a table of your raw data, but it tells you how many times a particular score was selected. How many times did we see 18? How many times did we see 20 years old? How many times did we see 35? So this frequency table is one way to see what kind of answers were more common. So leave it the display frequency tables check mark, go to statistics, and here you might be interested in all of the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. Maybe you want things like standard deviation, variance, range, and the minimum and maximum scores. And maybe because you're using data um, that you want to use the median, you want to know about quartiles. So quick note, which measure of central tendency and variability you select for your data depends on part on the type of data you have. For example, if you have nominal data, the mode is the only measure of central tendency that you can use, and the range or the number of options is the only measure of variability you can use. You can't do a mean or a median when your data are categories, so the mode is the one you would need. If your data are ordinal, you could use the mode or the median, and with your measures of variability, you could use the range or interquartile range. If your data are interval or ratio, the mean, median, and mode are all possible, and all of the measures of dispersion are possible. But just because it's possible doesn't mean it's best. So for example, if I asked you for a display of data, which measure of central tendency is best, you could not say the mean because it's the average. You would first need to know the scale of measurement you have, and then you would want to look at some display of the data to figure out if it's got a nice, normal kind of hilly curve, in which case you could use any of the measures of central tendency and variability. But if you've got data that is not a nice hill but is kind of skewed or lumpy and wonky, 
Again, the mean is not a great option because it's not going to tell you what's most typical. If you have um, lumpy or skewed data, you would want to use the median and the interquartile range. Only if you've got a nice hill would the mean and either the standard deviation of variance be your best bet. If you had two hills, like a double back camel, you would want to pick the mode as your best measure of central tendency and the range or the minimum and maximum scores as your possibility because you have two hills, two most popular scores, and so the mode would be your best measure. Now, those things considered, we're going to pick continue, and here we're going to look at lots of things that we're given. You can also ask frequencies to do charts for you. So you could do bar charts, which are great if it's nominal data, or you can do a histogram if you've got interval or ratio data. Bar chart, good for nominal and ordinal. Histogram, which is more continuous, which is good for interval or ratio data. We also like to show the normal curve on the histogram so you can get an idea whether you have a nice even hill or something that's kind of skewed or wonky. So click continue. And to recap, we picked statistics and made some options there. And for charts, in this case, I selected a histogram because in this case, age is a ratio variable and height is a ratio variable. So a histogram is better than a bar chart. Once you click OK, you will get the statistics that you asked for for each of the variables. You get this frequency table that shows you how many times each of those options was selected. How many 17 year olds do we have? 18 year olds, 19 year olds, etc. Or for height, we had people anywhere from 52 inches to 77 inches. And that histogram, this is a graph of a continuous variable like interval or ratio data, um, puts that normal curve in to show us this isn't quite normal. It's not bad, we might call it approximately normal, but it's a little tall and spiky. This spike would be known as leptocurtic. Leptocurtic means leaping. It's taller than a regular hill. If we had a distribution that was flat across, that would be called platycurtic, like a tail on a platypus. It's flat. If we have something that's approximately normal, say maybe this tower was squished down a little bit, then we would have a normal distribution or one that's mesocurtic. Meso means middle, like table in Spanish. And so mesa, mesa, means kind of middle height. If we look at the distribution for height of our students, this one is more approximately normal. We don't have one tall spike here. We have kind of a nice rounded hill that's fairly balanced on both sides. So while I would call this distribution leptocurtic, I would call this distribution mesocurtic. And again, this is a histogram that helps show you that interval or ratio data. The last thing we can do um, to look at descriptive statistics and graphs for the sample is to use Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. Explore gives you a lot more options. So we're going to stick with age and height on our dependent list. Explore will throw in everything you want and probably a little bit more. By default, it's going to show you both statistics and plots, which is another word for graphs and we can select which one. So with descriptives, it's going to give us everything. We could also ask it to show us outliers. Outliers are scores that are unusual, that are far away from the rest of the distribution. It is out in the boondocks, right? So we might have somebody that is significantly older than everybody else in the data set or who makes a lot more or a lot less money than everybody else. Outliers are three or more standard deviations from the mean two or more standard deviations and we call it extreme scores, three or more and we could call it an outlier. So you can ask it to try to help you find outliers in your data set and click continue. Under plots, um, by default it'll want to give you a box plot, which is good for ordinal data or when you're using the median. It will want to give you a stem and leaf plot, which is kind of like the histogram we just saw except sideways. So histogram, stem and leaf. One is more with bars, one is more with numbers. So we'll look at how those show the same thing. So we might ask it to do the histogram as well. You don't need the normality plots. Those are other things beyond your scope right now. 
So again, add this histogram check if you've got interval or ratio data, and you'd want to stick with a, a bar chart um, if you have nominal or ordinal data, which we did through analyze and um, frequencies. I will also show you how to build a few graphs um, in the next section that are just from this graphs tab, but we'll save that for the next uh, video lesson. Okay, so you've got statistics chosen. You've got your plots chosen. Let's see what we get. When you use Explore, it first tells you how many people are in your data set. Capital letter N means the total sample or number of people. We had 171 people who answered the age question, seven people who left it blank for a total data set of 178 people. Then we get all those descriptive statistics plus a little extra um, beyond what we had for frequencies. Here we can see not only the mean and the median, variance, standard deviation, and range, but the interquartile range, which is good for the median. But note the mode or modes is not reported here. So if you really want the mode, you need to do frequencies instead of explore. It tries to show you what the most extreme values are, which are the case numbers, you know, the highest five scores for age, who was the person and what age did they report, and the lowest ages, right? So those are shown here. We would have to actually take the mean and standard deviation here to figure out if someone is far enough to be an outlier by using the table. The histogram shows us the age of all the students in the class from the last couple semesters. We can see we have a lot of 19 and 20 year olds. The, the mean or um, average age is 22.47, right? So the mean is pulled up a little bit because we've got some older students in here. This distribution is what's called skewed. It's not a nice normal hill. It's, it's kind of leptocurtic because it's leaping up here in this category. And those old, couple of older students are pulling that mean towards them. It's making that average age look higher. In the case of skew, the mean is not your best measure of central tendency. You wanna X this out. You would want to use the median instead. The most typical student in Psych 2231 is 20 years old which is where we see a lot of cases here. The stem and leaf plot takes the stem, the number of years, and shows you how many people selected that. We have one person who was 17, a number of people who were 18, a lot more people who were 19, 20. So again, if you imagine taking the stem and leaf plot and kind of setting it up this way, it's showing you the same thing as a histogram. You can visually see that they align together. Both the histogram and stem and leaf plot are based on the mean. This is called a box and whisker plot. A box and whisker plot is based on the median. What we see here is the median, and it shows us students here that are from the first quartile to the third quartile. In other words, the 25th percentile to the 75th. This is the inner 50% of the distribution. These whiskers show the 10th and 90th percentile. 90% of people fall within this range, right? And this is the other 10%. We have 10% of students that are um, further out than most people. Any cases that are extreme or about two standard deviations out will get flagged with a little circle. And it's showing you the case number, person number 166 in the data set answered here, person number 153 answered here. The ones with stars are three or more standard deviations out. These are outliers. These are ones that are um, really less typical than the other scores. So we've got a couple of folks, if this is age, scoring you know, in 40s, 50s, even 60 years old sometimes in, in the class that we're looking at. Here is a distribution for height. This histogram is approximately normal. It's not very tall or very flat. And it's not skewed, it's not coming over, being pulled to one side or the other. The stem and leaf plot shows the same thing. And we can see here that we've got um, about 65 inches or 5.5 is our average uh, median score. 
and then we